On Fiverr, I recently hit over 1,000 orders for my face rating out of 10 gig, and I've compiled all of those ratings into this single Excel spreadsheet. On top of this, I've also made note of each of their ethnic backgrounds, current level of balding, age brackets, body types, and if they mention they're five foot seven or below in height. With this data, I'll be able to answer all questions such as, what percentage of guys are a five or below? What percentage of guys are a seven or above? How much does being overweight, average build or jacked impact your rating? How much does your age affect your rating? Do guys become more or less attractive over the age of 30? How much of a role does ethnicity play? All this data is going to be revealed in the video. But just before we start, I want to see a few predictions. So, if we were to draw a chart with the 1 to 10 look scale on the x-axis and percentage on the y-axis, what do you think the chart would look like? Because already, some people think it looks like this, a completely flat and even distribution. So 10% of men are 1s, 10% are 2s, 10% 3s, 4s and so on. Others think it looks more like this, a bell curve shape, with a higher concentration of guys in the middle, then very few people at the extremes of the graph being either really good looking or really unattractive. Some people even think it looks like this, where there's actually more guys below a 5 than above a 5, making the average rating a 3 or a 4. Finally, some people think the chart can be split into categories broken down by secondary factors, such as a man's body fat percentage or age. For example, the average overweight guy is a 4, meanwhile the average jacked guy is a 7. Let me know what theory, 1, 2, 3 or 4, you think is most accurate in the comments below. And if you've chosen theory 4, also tell me which factors you think will have the biggest impact on attractiveness, out of weight, ethnicity, age, balding, etc. So, let's get this started. We'll begin with the complete breakdown, including everyone. Out of 1,000 guys, the most common rating I gave was a 5 which totted up to 314 people. Anyone who received this rating I deemed to be completely plain and average looking. Nothing particularly striking about their appearance, but nothing unattractive either. And I've attached some examples here so you can see what I mean. Also, just a quick disclaimer, in this video I haven't used any images from any customers who's brought my service. Not one. All of these images have been sourced elsewhere. So, if you're watching and have purchased a rating from me in the past, don't worry, your face is 100% not in this video. The second most common rating I gave was a 4, coming in very close second with 290 people. This includes anyone who is slightly below average looking and noticeably has a few unattractive flaws. But at the same time, nothing majorly damaging. Anyway, the next most common rating I gave was a 6, of which 170 guys received. I gave this rating to anyone who's slightly above average looking. They have a couple promising features that would be considered attractive by most people and may only have a handful of flaws. For example, this guy has a slight narrowing lower third, his eyes are a little misaligned, he has upper eyelid exposure and a slight mid face asymmetry. But at the same time, none of these are major flaws, so he's still good enough to warrant a 6. Anyway, carrying on. Next up are the guys who received a 3. There were 129 of these. I gave this to anyone who has one or several major flaws negatively impacting their appearance. The most common ones being high body fat percentage, bug eyes, long horse faces and weak and rounded jawlines. Next up, the people who received a 7, there were just 76 of these guys, so less than 10% here. You receive this rating if you're convincingly above average looking. Most features need to be attractive here, and there is very little margin for flaws and weaknesses. However, you may still be able to get away with one or two. For example, this man's eyebrows aren't dark enough, and this man has nasolabial folds. The very next rating after this is an 8 out of 10. Highly attractive guys or chads as a lot of followers of my channel like to call them. Very few people receive this which is why just 13 out of 1000 guys got this as a top score. Oh and by the way, the maximum rating is an 8 and that's not me being harsh or unfair, 
it's just how the system works. Numbers 9 and 10 are unnecessary and also imply perfection. And I explain more in depth why I leave out these numbers in a previous video, but I'm not going to repeat. It's just how the system works and the max is an 8. Likewise, the lowest possible rating and most uncommon was a 2, for which just 8 guys received. Less than 1%. And this rating is only here for anyone with a severe deformity that can't be corrected. In my opinion, the difference between a 2 and a 3 is 3s can always do something extreme to at least reach a 4 or maybe a 5. This could be excessive weight loss or surgery. Meanwhile, 2s can't. They're basically stuck. So, that's the complete breakdown and this is the line of best fit. To answer some common questions, what is the completely average rating out of all 1000 guys? The answer is 4.789 or roughly 4.8 rounded. So if you're above this value then you're in the top 50%, meanwhile if you're below this value you're in the bottom 50%. How many guys are a 7 or above? The answer is 8.9%. How many guys are a 4, 5 or 6, usually referred to as normie tier? The answer is 77.4%. How many guys are a 3 or below? The answer is 13.7%. Okay, now moving on to the most interesting part of the video. We're now going to isolate different factors to see how each of them affect your looks. We'll start with body type. I categorised all 1000 guys into four distinct groups. One, average build. This means anyone who has a normal frame and a body fat percentage of around 15% on the low end and at most 25% on the high end. 587 people fell into this bracket out of 1,000. 2. Jacked, meaning anyone who's visibly muscular, has a clear six-pack, fairly large shoulders and arms, all on top of a low body fat percentage. I also placed anyone of an athletic build into this category too. In total, there were 148 of these, which I actually find quite surprising. I didn't expect there to be anywhere near this many jacked guys out there. 3. Skinny, anyone whose low body fat percentage with minimal muscle, there were 164 of these. In particular, a lot of young guys, guys below the age of 21. 4. Overweight, anyone who's clearly above 25% body fat, and this also includes anyone who I deem to be skinny fat. There were 101 of these, so 10% of guys were overweight. So, how do the distribution curves look for each group? Well, here's how it looks for average guys, now here's how it looks for jacked guys. As you can see, there is a clear right shift in terms of attractiveness. And this is kind of what we'd expect, as generally, men who are jacked have lower body fat percentages, which increases facial attractiveness. The average jacked guy was an entire point higher than a man with an average body. And remember, this is just talking about facial attractiveness. Including body, you'd probably expect the jacked guy to be a good two points higher overall. The last thing I'm going to say about this is to note that getting ripped can't save everyone. 14% of guys were still below a five even despite having a ripped body. How about overweight guys? Well, unsurprisingly, their average was significantly lower. A lot of guys got threes and fours. In fact, here's the line for overweight guys. The number of threes won't even fit on my chart. They made up 55% of the overweight sample. None received a six or above. This is why I keep saying in my videos, guys, if you're a man, being overweight is something you just can't afford. It's way too costly. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Just 7% of guys made it to a five. And this is often considered the minimum level you need before you even start thinking about trying your luck in the dating game. So if you're watching this video and you're an overweight guy, before you do anything else, you just gotta lose weight first. It will literally add two plus points to your overall attractiveness. Finally, taking a look at skinny guys. Their distribution remains very similar to average guys, but there was still a slight reduction in attractiveness. Having a skinny build only led to a 0.2 point decrease compared to having an average build, so not much difference. However again, the impact of being skinny on your overall SMV may be greater than what it seems on the surface, as women may start to reject you because of your poor frame instead of the tiny difference in facial attractiveness. 
so I'd estimate the difference between skinny and average is more like one point overall. So that's the results for body types. Now let's take a closer look at age. Again, there were four categories. One, 21 or below, for which there were 271 guys. Two, 22 to 29, which was the biggest age bracket at 524 men. Three, 30 to 39, there were 170 of these. Four, 40 plus, just 35 guys were in this age bracket. Again, let's see what the chart looks like for each age group. We'll start with those in the 22 to 29 age range. Here's their distribution, very similar to what we've already seen. How about guys in their 30s? It's often said men age like fine wine, and a lot of guys out there think men become more attractive after the age of 30. Well, this is what my data had to say about this theory. As we can see, there is a clear decrease in attractiveness and it works out you'll be on average one point worse off in your 30s compared to your 20s. This is most likely because as people get older, their hairline starts to recede, people get out of shape, their skin begins to deteriorate and many other age-related factors. It's also interesting to note that out of 170 30-year-olds, 0 receives an 8 out of 10. So chances are, if you're a Chad now, there's a chance you'll lose your Chad status at some point during your 30s. Now on to guys who are 21 or below. I stated in a recent video that guys in this age category haven't fully developed yet, so we'd expect them to fare a little lower on the scale. And the data confirms this prediction. Men who were 21 or below were on average 0.3 points lower than guys in their 20s. However, these guys were still better off than the guys 30 or above. Finally, the guys in the 40 plus range. Here's the data. Now remember, the sample size for this category was small, so the results may be a little inaccurate. Just 35 guys who are above 40 have balked my rating. And as we can see, their average is slightly lower than the guys at 30 with a difference of 0.4 points. Now moving on to ethnicity. According to my data, the ethnicity with the highest average was Latino, with an average of 5.1 and 67 sample size. Also, Combination 2 got an average of 5.1, however the sample was just 19 people, and it's clear to see this in the shape of the graph. White was next with an average of 4.9, there were 599 people, then followed by Black with an average of 4.8. It's worth noting though that there were a higher proportion of 8s who were black than any other at 3.6%, three times the average for other ethnicities at 1.3%. Following from this, Indians had an average of 4.5 and there were 96 people, Asians was 4.4 and had 59 people, Middle East was 4.3 and there were 49 people. So when we group the data together, we get this messy chart, and we can see there isn't much variation between each and maybe it's not as big of a factor of attractiveness as a lot of people think. Finally, moving on to balding. Now, putting everything on a line graph with this data would get very messy very quickly. So instead, I'll just provide the averages and number of people for each one. The average rating for men with full heads of hair or Norwood 1 on the balding scale was 5.1. 551 out of 1,000 people had full heads. This shows nearly half of all guys out there are suffering from at least some level of hairline recession, way more common than you might think. Next up was Norwood 2, the first stage of balding. There were 238 guys at this stage and their average was 4.7. 118 people had Norwood 3 and their average was 4.2. Very few people had Norwood 4 to 7, so I'll just fill in their average and number of people here. In fact, a lot of guys who'd reached these stages of balding had already shaved off the rest of their hair at this point, which is why there are more guys at Norwood 7 than 5 or 6. This chart is the last chart I'm going to show. It shows how each factor either positively or negatively affects your rating. As we can see, being overweight and balding have the biggest negative impacts, and what's interesting with balding is that Norwood 4, 5 and 6 are all actually worse than being completely bald. So, if you're at the point where your hairline is really receded, it's better to shave everything off rather than clinging to a few final strands.
The biggest positive by far was getting a gym body, leading to a full point of improvement. Factors such as ethnicity had the least impact. So, that's all the data. Now, this video obviously took a ton of work and has only been made possible because over 1,000 of you guys purchased ratings from me in the last eight months. This video, in fact, has taken more production hours than any others I've made previously. So if you found this video insightful, your best way to support me and my work is to also purchase a rating package directly from me. The smallest of which starts at just $5 for a basic out of 10 rating. And there are also full face analysis and tailored looks maxing packages too. A link to my Fiverr page where I sell my product will be the first link in the description below. All you have to do is click it, register, select a package, continue, send me your photos and that's it. Let me know any questions in the comments or message me directly through Fiverr. I'll be happy to help you out and I hope to see you over there soon.